Every business wants good customer reviews. Every customer wants a good experience. So what happens when both sides click? Or in some cases, when they don't? From Yelp and Entrepreneur Media, this is Behind the Review. I'm Emily Washkovic, Yelp small business expert. Every episode, I pick one review on Yelp and talk to the entrepreneur and the reviewer about the story and business lessons behind it. Let's see what's behind this week's review. It was actually in a very special moment in my life as I had just had my naturalization ceremony the day before. So I thought it was going to be a regular day at work. And my team surprised me with a pizza party for lunch. And they came in with all these big boxes of Brick 3 pizza and It was quite a surprise. And I think the best part was also that they said, well, we know that you cannot eat meat. It was Friday during Lent. So we ordered a veggie pizza for you. And I appreciated that. But when I tried it, I was like, oh, wow, (laughs) I really liked it. I've never had a veggie pizza before. And it was just the best pizza I had ever had. It was just, I had this sort of magical moment. And clearly this business really connects with a very uh, special moment in my life. That's Daniela telling me about the first time she experienced Brick 3 Pizza. This moment in her life was memorable. She had achieved her dream of becoming a U.S. citizen. And fittingly, she celebrated with one of America's favorite foods, pizza. After her first bite of veggie pizza, Brick 3 became her favorite pizza place. Let's hear Daniela's review. We had it at work and I was blown away by the veggie pizza. I've never had it before and it was supreme. On my second time, I had a caprese, which happens to be the house specialty. And again, I was blown away. Fresh ingredients on a big New York style slice. I'll come back for more. Short and sweet, but informative. Daniela loves the fresh ingredients and has experienced a few slices at the time of her review. She also included some photos. I'm a very visual person. So being a restaurant or a business that sells, you know, food items, I think that it's really important to be able to have the visual experience, particularly in the case of my review. I was just amazed about how fresh the ingredients were. It caught my attention that the house specialty was that that caprese, which is really far from the, I would say the average, the regular pizza, you know, like that would have some kind of meat, sausage, pepperoni that I was amazed. I'm like, this is a fresh, this is like a healthy (laughs) slice of pizza and I love it. So to me, it's really important to try to communicate not only with words what my experience was, but also to show it because it talks a lot about the freshness, the quality, and what the the business has to offer. Showing visuals helps consumers get a sense of the business, the products and services they offer, and how they look in real life, if you will, rather than maybe a styled or professional photo. Let's hear from owner Dimitri on how Brick 3 Pizza came to be. We're a pizza by the slice place. That's kind of what we're known for. By 11 a.m., we have 16 different types of pizzas out. We do offer 30 total. So if you order online, you can do all of that stuff. You can call in orders just like old school pizza place. We're not forcing you to use Grubhub or DoorDash if you don't have to. We prefer you don't. But We've always, the pizza by the slice is just the easiest because everyone wants to try something new. It's boring. You can go get pepperoni pizza anywhere. You got to try fun stuff. I have a family that has always owned restaurants. My dad has always owned restaurants since the day I was born. It's all I know. I tried to do other stuff. I don't know how to do other stuff. All I know is restaurants. Me and my friend always wanted to do a pizza place. We looked at a couple other locations. This one fell into his lap pretty perfectly. So we rolled with this location. Thank God, because it ended up being perfect. Brick 3 is located on Old World 3rd Street in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, my hometown. 
Lined up and down the street are restaurants, pubs, local businesses, and just one block west is Pfizer Forum, the arena of the Milwaukee Bucks, the current NBA champions. Dimitri's business has sat in this location since before Pfizer was even built, when the Bucks weren't so hot, and they still played at the Bradley Center. We'll hear more later on how Dimitri and his team plan for local events, games, playoff series, and conventions. But first, here he is sharing a bit more about their fresh ingredients and commitment to high-quality food. My dad's owned a restaurant since the day I was born. And now that he's retired, he comes and works with me every day because he's bored out of his mind. So he pushes other things too. Like you go to some places, just say like a chicken parm pizza. Most places will take a chicken tender frozen from the store, cook it, chop it up, throw it on pizza. We take a fresh chicken breast that we cut ourselves. We put the breading on ourselves. We deep fry it ourselves. We take it out. We do everything. I tell everybody, like even the employees here, is it a place that you'd want to go to? Same with food. Like it's, I want something that I would eat. I don't want something like, I mean, it's 13 years and I still order pizza once a week. I eat slices probably every three or four days, but it's still something I want to be able to eat. I want everything to be fresh. A lot of people don't even know we have sandwiches here, but the people from the Pfizer literally come every single day, six days a week, except Sundays because they're off. And they have a sandwich like they love it. Those people all know it. Once people know about our sandwiches, they eat them a lot more. But again, it goes down to the Philly cheesesteak, ham and cheese. Like we don't just go buy some ham that's sliced. Like we buy it ourselves. We slice it ourselves. We do everything ourselves. High quality stuff. No, no basic as much as possible. A commitment to quality ingredients that builds lasting relationships with customers. Everyone loves pizza, but there's something about pizza with fresh ingredients that for many is a reason to come back for more. And let's not forget that it's not just pizza either. There's sandwiches, salads, all prepared in-house. It was the uniqueness of the veggie pizza. I thought, wow, it's hard to put it in words, but the flavors that I got from it not being, it didn't feel like a pizza without meat. It felt like it was really something different, something else. So I can tell you that I eat pizza the most at the office, right? When we we order something, it's always pizza and we try it for different businesses. So when I tried for three, I could tell right away that it was it was something I liked so much more than other pizzas that I had had in the past. So I'm pretty sure that even if it had been on a regular day, I would have still pay attention, be like, okay, what is this pizza again? Yeah, give me a name again. And I'm pretty serious now about the whole pizza tasting thing. I have to tell you, I have a list. Like I created a list on my phone because, well, culturally speaking, right? I didn't grow up having pizza all the time. Pizza was something that we had once in a while. It was like a very special occasion when mom would let me have a burger or a pizza. So I want to learn about all these businesses. I have to tell you, I've been in the Milwaukee area for almost five years. So the fact that when we, I connected very well with Yelp because I didn't have any knowledge of okay, what, what are the businesses? What are the best places to go to or the services or what the locals think of the places in the area where to eat, where you should go to this place instead of another one. So Yelp has, in my personal experience, has been my platform to understand and to learn about my surroundings. And therefore, in this particular time, I have a a little bit of, I have some fun with it. I have my own list of different pizza businesses and styles and that we try. And Three Brick Pizza has been still my number one. (laughs) And it's not only mine, also in the office. We really, really like it. And clearly we've ordered it uh, multiple times. I moved back to the Midwest a few years ago, and I'll be honest, I had to ask Daniela for her list of pizza places. But I, too, put Brick 3 at the top of my list. Let's take a quick break. Satisfying customers is top of mind for every business owner, and satisfied customers are best served by empowered, connected teams that are able to focus on their work instead of technology issues. 
That's why with the Galaxy Book lineup, Samsung set out to make a PC that helps you reclaim the workday and keep the positive customer reviews rolling in. Invest in your workforce. Invest in your future. Upgrade to the Galaxy Book, the PC that helps modern businesses go further. Explore the whole range at samsung.com forward slash Galaxy Book for work. And we're back. A distinctive thing about Brick 3 is their boxes. No, the boxes is big. Honestly, that's one thing I have a big, I've always had like big fights about. We've tried cheaper boxes. It doesn't work. Like our, our slices are, a slice is 10 inches big. So a lot of places you can't, like you'll see other places that use a slice box, which is like literally the shape of a pizza, like a triangle. Ours won't fit in that. Our slices are way too big. So you got to use a quality box. And that was one thing my business partner stressed right away. Like keep the, the logo and the stuff on the boxes because that's big, especially like you said, walking down North Ave or I used to live at the Modern. You go in the garbage room and you see the box. You're like, oh, I should probably get pizza today. So you're paying for its promotion is what it is. People get mad about the price of boxes, but it's actually promotion. And while our reviewer, Daniela, still hasn't been to Brick 3 in person, the interior and design of the business is another thing that sets them apart. They have a cool collection and it connects them to the local community. So the bobbleheads literally started because the Admirals people back when there was a Bradley Center would bring one in every once in a while. And then they would bring in like the next new one. And then the Bucks would see it. So like some of the Bucks guys would bring one in. And this all started at Bradley Center. And then it turned into fans would bring them in because I'll trade them like a bobblehead for a slice and a soda after a game. Then I started getting more. I have like another hundred in storage and I just don't have the shelf to put it up yet. So we're going to, I, I want to make it. It's funny. I remember they all, we had six and they started on top of our Coke machine and now it's three levels already and we need to make more. Sports is big. In addition to the three-level bobblehead collection circling the walls of the inside of the business, Dimitri has also thought of and changed the interior colors multiple times until he found the right fit. Cleanliness and the presentation of the business is also huge for him. So originally when we opened, it was red and black in here. Then I really dislike that because it made me think Chicago fans felt welcome and there was a Bulls place. And I'm like, I don't want that. So right away, I started changing everything. I changed to white. Then I changed. Once the Bucks came out with their new colors, I love the blue and green. Change everything to blue and green. So now that's where we're at. <laughs> I'm going to try to keep it that as long as possible. I do. I love the white and black. Again, like you were talking about the, the brick and mortar part. I love the inside. Keeping stuff clean. We actually were on Channel 4 for a clean award at one point a couple of years ago. I have real OCD, not like people say, oh, I clean my bedroom twice and now I have OCD. Like, no, I count my steps. I, the basement's as clean as possible. Every health inspector that comes in here says, I can't believe how clean your basement is. This building is the oldest building on Third Street. This, like we, it would have been cheaper for us to knock it down and build a new building here and they wouldn't let us because it's a historic building. So you wow. got to keep it. Dimitri has pride in his brick and mortar, and that desire to keep it up and make it clean, friendly, and welcoming is what results in so much repeat business. Our in-person people, I bet you it's 70% repeat customers, if not more. It's the same people every day. Fiserv, law offices, a bunch of those people that are right around this area within walking distance. You could tell how it gets better when it's like 70 to 80 degrees outside. Just more people want to walk. They don't want to be locked in. And then that area in March where it's like 60 and people in Wisconsin think it's 90. So they're all out and about. So it's awesome. So that helps. Delivery is all different types. I mean, it's we deliver to restaurants. It's great. Like we do restaurants all the time. And carry out like Daniela and her team. The Brick 3 staff is small, but mighty. They're great at making high quality food, of course, but they also set the tone in the restaurant. Their energy and excitement to engage with the customer makes the in-person experience that much better. Dimitri attributes this to the team being like family. I love my staff. I do. It's, it's sad where it's at. I mean, usually we have 12. We are down to six. So it's, it's rough, but 
they're used to working and they, they like it. I mean, it's better. They kind of like it this way because they know that they're still getting their 40 hours. So they don't have to worry about bringing other people in. But like, we're small. I, I, when I hire people, the first thing I tell them is in two weeks, tell me if you like this place or don't. Like, I don't want you to just leave. I want you to tell me like, I dislike this. I want to know because six people, even 10 people is a small business. Like you, and smaller than most. It's not a normal. Most people have 20 employees, 30 employees. You go to any other restaurant out here, they have more employees than us. Insomnia Cookies has more employees than us. And they're half the square footage. So you can tell, I like to keep it small because I like to keep it family-oriented stuff. We actually celebrate our Christmas on Easter every year because it's like the first day we're closed. So I take everybody to a restaurant. We all go eat and hang out. And that tight-knit team works together to prepare for and survive the days when they're slammed. The downtown location means sports schedules, conventions, expos, and other citywide celebrations can significantly impact the foot traffic and business they do in a day. I asked Dimitri how he prepares. Majority of the time, it's Fiserv. I check the Fiserv site. So I try to make two-week schedules for the guys so everybody knows when they're here. And then I will put all the events for those two weeks on the calendar. So we know what's going on. A lot of things won't pop up. And then I don't really know about them until that day. But there's other things that you will know about, like Shamrock Shuffle is in two weeks. That's like the biggest thing for this city besides the finals. Those are things that I do try to keep an eye on that. But some things will pop up that I don't know about and we'll get just smoked. Like I actually just thought about it yesterday that Harley Fest is this week. So I'm glad I thought about it because I need to staff more now for the weekend. And then there's like the anime convention. I always forget about it. Huge though, huge. And you can tell right away because we start getting tons of deliveries because they all stay at the Hyatt or the Aloft. And I try to keep Hyatt and Aloft employees happy as possible because I always want them sending us this way. So I always try that way. It's not a perfect system, but few are. By staying in tune with the major venues and their event schedules, Dimitri and his team can be prepared a majority of the time. Beyond that, they know the cues to pay attention to that might tip them off that business is picking up so they can add staff and get prepared. To close us out, I want to talk about reviews. Here's Daniela sharing a bit of her experience in hospitality, as well as what motivates her to review. I have a a major in the hospitality business. So during my years in college, I was fortunate to train with some of the best in the hospitality business. I was trained by masters like the Four Seasons Hotel, Intercontinental, Japanese Nikon. Yes, I had all these great teachers that I learned so much from that. The importance of service, right, of how the how you need or you should be serving or where does that need to come from? So I totally understand. I've been on the other side providing the service, right, to to a customer. So to me, it's really important to give a feedback, mainly, you know, to appreciate to and give a feedback. If it's not a such a positive experience to give a feedback to the business or I feel like I have that. I notice little things just because I've also been on that other side. And what drives me to share my reviews or to write the reviews is that I used it so much myself when we first moved to the Milwaukee area. It was really my guide in so many ways and it helped me so much. I think that Yelp is so much more than just, oh, this is a good place or a bad place or don't eat here. No, I think that you can really share so much about a service or a business, whether it's a a tip, right? A tip about it or something you could ask or know or about the business or um, some feedback to the business, which I personally have found so useful when being able to have that platform to let the business perhaps know, well, I have a suggestion for you. If that's okay, here's my suggestion to the business. And they've responded. I've gotten a really great response from them in many occasions. So that's what drives me to produce the reviews for the businesses and for other people that are just like me were clueless at some point. I didn't know where to go. And for Dimitri, like many entrepreneurs, Yelp is an asset and a challenge. So I see certain businesses that push really hard towards getting reviews. Like that's their their goal. I'm not trying to get reviews. Do I appreciate reviews? 100%. And it's cool because now they're 
pretty much on everything. Like if people order through DoorDash, I get a review. If people order through Square, when you get your receipt, you can do a review. Yelp to me is awesome. And I dislike it at the same time. When I go anywhere outside of Milwaukee, I use Yelp 100% 100 of the time. It's not even a question. It's just the problem to me as as a business owner, like the biggest thing to me is a customer can come in 99 times, never write a review. The 100th time they come in, there's like a little piece of hair in their food. Holy shit, I have to go straight to Yelp. I have to tell everybody this is bad news. Like, no, don't do that to me. Like, give me a review all the time if that's the way it's going to be. But like I said, I personally, like I loved anywhere I go. Like I remember I went to San Diego, I went to San Francisco. All I did was click on sort and did most reviewed and checked everything out that was there because you got to do most reviewed too. You can't just do highest reviewed because somebody has seven reviews. They're going to have five stars. That, that happens. So you got to go to a place that has three, four, 500. I mean, I remember in San Diego, there was this place that's probably 500 square feet. It's called Oscars. It's a little like ceviche taco place. It had like 1900 reviews. I couldn't believe it. Like the line is an hour long. It happens all day though, but it's because of Yelp. It's because people check like, oh, like this place must be, must be good. If, if Yelp has night, like 1900 reviews is next level. Like you are, you're, I think we're at like 300. And that concludes our episode. Be sure to subscribe so you get new episodes every Thursday. I hope you enjoyed it and were able to take a thing or two away to implement in your own life. Whether it's a new idea that you can bring back to your business or a fresh perspective on how to be a positive influence as a consumer, we share these stories to inspire and create more meaningful connections in your local community. For more information about today's business or to connect with me, check out the show notes. This episode featured conversations with Dimitri Itzenis, the owner of Brick 3 Pizza, and Daniela B., a reviewer living in Milwaukee. To learn more about the episode, check out the episode blog post. And don't forget to subscribe so you get an alert each Thursday when a new episode comes out. To claim your own Yelp business page and start engaging with consumers, visit business.yelp.com. Starting this month, we have a special offer for our listeners who are interested in trying Yelp advertising. Use code BTRPOD300 to get started today. That's BTRPOD300 to get started today. And a $300 upfront credit will be applied instantly. Charges apply once credit is used, cannot be combined with other offers. Any unused credit expires 90 days from date of acceptance. Eligible businesses only, subject to Yelp's master advertising terms. This offer expires at the end of 2021. Our theme song is performed by Ali Schwartz and produced by Robbie G of Messerol Sound. The show was produced and edited by Entrepreneur Media.